Kosha Conservation District. And we have a third district in the county, and that's the Dubois Crowheart Conservation District. And Erin Hanley is the manager of that district. She was unable to be here today, so I guess you'll have to contact her if you're from Dubois. Um, I'd like to start off and tell you that our conservation districts are actually the local voice for natural resource issues, particularly soil and water. And I brought this map, um, didn't have a map of the whole county, but this is actually the map of the Lower Wind River Conservation District. It's the largest conservation district area-wise in the county, and it actually covers quite a big area. A big area. Starts down here, near Hudson, although Hudson is not in our district, they're in the Papoja Conservation District, and it kind of zigzags up here and goes up toward um, the Little Wind River, the Big Wind River. We go north, um, take in, oh, about where Highway 287 um, is it in conjunction with US 26. We go north, do another little zigzag and go north and go along the Owl Creek Mountains, don't include the Owl Creek, Oops. and then we go to the east. Just one more um, reminder that yeah. there's four sessions going on, and that fourth uh, room feed at Cardiovascular Health Services in Fremont County, that will be in the, the, the lunch room, uh, the Little Wind Center, just north of here, um, in that building. That's with Alan Doherty and Claude Meyer. Um, that's the Little Wind Center. Then we go all the way east to the McClellan County border, south and back um, to the west, and we take in um, a lot of the San Rod area and the border Papoja in that particular area too. So it's a pretty large area. All three districts have a mill levy now, which means that you pay for some of the things we do. Um, we try to make sure that we have cost share programs available to help folks um, put conservation on the ground. So I have a little brochure to uh, tell you a little bit about our district. Um, we do educational programs with the schools. We used to do the Ag Expo <laughs> in conjunction with the Fremont County Cattle Women. Uh, that's kind of gone by the wayside with all the restrictions we've had lately and schools closing. So uh, we haven't participated in that for a year. We're hoping to be able to do that again. We do water quality programs. Um, we are monitoring Muddy Creek and Ocean Lake, which both have been listed by the Wyoming Department of Environmental Quality as impaired. Muddy Creek's for E. coli, therefore it's um, impaired because if you, rec if you happen to be go swimming in there, there's a possibility that you could get E. coli. Um, and we're trying to find if there are hot spots on Muddy Creek, and that's what we do as a monitoring. Um, Ocean Lake is listed for sediment. There was a, a document written to indicate how much sediment could be handled naturally, and we're trying to reduce the sediment going into Ocean Lake through programs um, to help stabilize banks, um, uh, do some tree planting, that sort of thing. And we work with the Natural Resources Conservation District, which is the federal agency, and try to bring in money to do cost share programs for people to perhaps put in pivots or irrigation management practices. So I'll pass these out to you. Um, we have several cost share programs that we do. Um, one is called a Community Cost Share Resource Enhancement where we work with local organizations um, to beautify our city or their city, Gap, Bloom, and Pavilion, or Shoshone, um, and we cost share up to $5,000. Um, we do 50% of a, like a $10,000 project, we would cost share up to $5,000. Um, and so that's one of the projects that we have. Another cost share program is the Resource Enhancement Cost Share Program, where we do um, sharing up to $10,000 on a $20,000 project for um, irrigation water management. Um, primarily, those are the projects we've had so far. Uh, we also do some fencing, um, do off-site water for livestock, those kinds of things. So 
If you're interested in any of those, I have the applications here. We also have um, available here a, a land use and natural resource management plan, which was just revised this last fall, and it shows our goals and objectives for the next five years. One of the fun things that we have to hand out to people is a, a plant your own pencil. This is something we use for educational programs. And you actually can use the pencil and then plant it and it will grow whatever is on it. This one happens to be a forget-me-not. And we have those available in our booth. If you're interested, we'll make sure you get a pencil to plant. We have a, a an elected five-member board that is um, our supervisory board, and they're elected on staggering four-year terms. Um, our, one of our board members, if Bill Toff is here, he has to be the chairman of our, our board that's here. And um, our other members are Richard Dinky, um, vice chairman, Rod Rivers, secretary treasurer. Um, Ron Lucas is a member, and Ray Applicants is an urban member. Those are the folks that uh, represent the different areas in our county and um, are the ones that try to decide the goals and objectives each year for our district. So does anybody have any questions? I know that's kind of short and sweet, but I um, wanted to leave plenty of time for Kelsey. <laughs> I just want to add that the conservation district, so in Fremont County, there's three of us, right? And um, you can easily find this information, too, on the Fremont County Greenwood mapping. They have a, a nice layer for conservation districts, so you can type in your address, and it will tell you what conservation district you're in, because uh, our boundaries, you know, we, we border each other, and we do cover the reservation, but there's three of us that encompass Fremont County. So if you're covered by a conservation district, it's just a matter of which one. And I don't know if anybody here, um, I know one person that's from Lander that's here. I don't know if anybody else is in Lander, but that's where my conservation home base is, if you will. But just like Kathy said, we have big areas we cover. And, and the Propoja Conservation District goes out to Jeffrey City, and a little bit past Jeffrey City, and we go up to South Pass, up on top of the mountain there, and then we go um, up to uh, the rest stop going to Dubois. I don't know, what is that called? Um, so it's actually Chester kind of the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Virgin Dam area, thank you. Down in the West Winchester Ranch up there. Um, and one thing that's um, I think important that you know as conservation districts is we're really kind of the grassroots level for natural resource conservation. And so it's great to be involved. We have volunteer boards, they're elected officials by our community. And like Kathy said, there's rural positions, urban positions, and at large positions, and there's five members and they're elected. But really what it is 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 trying to get the collective community level voice of what kind of resource concerns and programs are needed that we can then take that to our partners at the Natural Resource Conservation Service, um, which is the federal government, to try and help steer programs to help with those resource concerns. So it's really good to be involved with your local conservation district if you have resource concerns on your property. Um, we, when we go to the schools, we like to say and tell our students that we're, we're here to help you, we're the helpful people. So a lot of folks end up calling conservation districts up in Lander especially if they've got questions about their, their, they've got riverfront property and they have questions about that, or they're wanting to plant certain trees, or they're, they want to know what's going on here or there. And even if we're not in that specific line of business, we're able to help direct them to where they go. So um, I would always say it's a good fail safe that if you have a natural resource concern on your property or a question about something, calling your local conservation district is a good start. Um, and if we don't know, we'll get you in touch with where you need to find that information. So um, it's really good to know that. Uh, just like Kathy said, in Papoja Conservation District, again, based in Lander, we have cost share programs as well, and we are mill levy funded, all three of us, like Kathy said, which means your taxpayer dollars, we're taxpayer entity, so our taxpayer dollars is for our services we're providing to you. Um, and with this, we offer cost share programs, and we're at, um, another good partnership with conservation districts is we're able to apply for grants and funding that can also help with other programs for your, your private property and your, your uh, programs you're looking at. So um, for Lander, we have a resource enhancement, similar to what Kathy was saying. And the objective of this cost share program is on farm, if you will. And it's to provide incentives for landowners who typically don't qualify for the big NRCS programs, federal farm bill programs. And this is to implement natural resource practices that address soil erosion, water 
quality, quantity, energy conservation, and improving wildlife habitat. And our cost area rates are different than Kathy's, um, and our maximum cost share is 5000 So if you had a $10,000 project, we would pay 5000 of that, again, 50% split. But that's an option to help folks that don't qualify for these big federal programs on their small acreages or just don't want to sign up with NRCS. There's, there's options to get help there for your private property. Um, we also have a community enhancement. And again, that's to provide incentives for res residents and businesses um, to help in natural resource conservation practices that address, again, soil erosion, water quality, quantity, energy conservation, improving wildlife habitat, and beautifying the natural landscaping along public corridors. And our cost share for this is only $1,000. Uh, but with this, we've done some good projects. We've done stuff with local Boy Scouts or Eagle Scouts. We've done different things with community members to do um, some neat kind of restoration projects and, and different projects to that nature, community-based. We have our community garden with this fun funding. We've helped with art classes, talking about natural environment, doing art stuff. So there's a lot of diversity with these community grants. Um, our third program that we offer is our irrigation water management program. And this is our biggest one, if you will, and it is the intent of this program is to help with cost share opportunities for ditch groups and companies. So it's really for your conveyance system of your irrigation district. It's not your on-farm practices. It's getting your conveyance system delivery. And so this is for, um, you know, to conserve irrigation water, reduce soil erosion, improve water quality, and improve efficiency. And this doesn't have a cap, but we do have a maximum cost share of 60% of the total project. And so these projects can be $20,000 projects or $15,000 for them, and they're big projects that happen here. So. Um, usually we try to partner with NRCS. Uh, they have engineers while we don't and technical skills that we don't, so we try to utilize those folks to help us get these engineering some designs and then we can help provide this cost share to get this conveyance system. <coughs> so that irrigation water management program is one of our bigger programs. Um, another thing for cost share that we have in our conservation districts, because we have listed bodies and impaired waters, similar like Kathy has, we have grant funding sources for that as well. So we have a listed E. coli River through City Park, the Papoja River, and we have funding specific for that from the Department of Environmental Quality. So certain landowners, we've done some projects of um, repairing and fencing, keeping livestock off of waterways, and doing some off-site water projects that has helped with our E. coli numbers. We were actually able to delist a section of our E. coli river this last year, which is really exciting for us, so we're going to continue marching forward with that. And even with that program, the, these funds are specific to this problem area, if you will, but we can do a lot of stuff with small acreage owners, with livestock users, producers, uh, septic tank rehab. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do in these impaired waters in, in conjunction with that grant and that grant-specific language. So that's another thing that conservation districts are able to do is go after grant funding. Um, we also have another grant with the National Association of Conservation Districts. So basically, we have a pot of money that we can hire outside engineering services for to try to help us get these projects engineered and, des and designed so then they can turn into an NRCS EQIP contract which cost share would help get them actually constructed and implemented. Or another cost share program um, or another entity that could help you know get the construction, get them to the ground actually, get the project in the ground. So we've applied for funding um, to get that technical experience, um, technical assistance so we can get these projects moving forward. So that's a lot in the mouthful. I don't know if anybody here is a lander, if this applies to anybody, but I just wanted to share that no matter where you are in Fremont County, there's a conservation district. We have lots of diverse programs. We work on a lot of similar issues and we work together um, on some things and it's just a good place to start uh, for any questions you have on your particular property or soil water and trees. Yeah. One of the projects she mentioned, um, cooperating with each other as well as other agencies there's a big initiative for Boysen Reservoir, if anybody heard about Harmful Algae Blooms. And so there's a big initiative to try to, one, figure out what we can do to let people know that um, Harmful Algae Blooms can be a problem for people and pets. Uh, another is to figure out what the sources might be. A third is to try to figure out what to do about it. And so we're working with the Wyoming Department of Environmental Quality on that. It's not just Boys and Reservoir, but that happens to be one of their high priority areas because it is a recreational area. And, and so we're working forward on, on trying to do some cooperative work on that. Um, another program that we all offer that we haven't mentioned is uh, our Food and Creeks Trails. And 
sell seedling trees and shrubs for windbreaks primarily. And so they don't cost much, but they aren't very big. But it's a way for you to get a windbreak started on your property. And we have our, uh, our, application, our application, our order form for that out at our booth. And I imagine Kelsey has one available as well. Uh, so, and even Dubois has that program available. So um, if you're interested in seedling trees, you, you can sure visit with you about that. Another program that we all do too in Fremont County, and we're, we're figuring it out, so we don't know the logistics of this year how it's going to work, but we typically offer well water testing. So we offer a cost share for well water testing. Um, if we can find a lab that can provide us the, the cost savings and work together. So um, usually every spring we uh, offer these programs for folks in our community, and we used to be able to use a local lab here in Riverton, but now we need to find somewhere else. So um, we're working through that. But anyway, all three of our conservation districts provide well water testing services and we'll, we'll get that up and running again here soon. Hopefully. Um, the local lab was decided that they would rather go to hydrocarbon testing and that's the reason that they're not able to do our well water testing. So uh, we're, we're working, as Kelsey said, on that so that we can still provide that service. So, um, it's good to know the quality of your well water and there are a lot of folks that have wells and don't know the quality of it. So that's, that's a good thing to do. And we're, we're gonna get it done here. Just we'll, we'll figure, figure out how to do it. Another thing that if, oh, sorry, go ahead. I did have, my husband almost died this year from the poison from two green algae eggs from wow. the mountains down in the spring and snow. Um, and I was wondering if there's any community Hazardous waste cleanup day that's set up, headed by the Solid Waste District, and we cooperate with those folks and, and try and help get at least those types of hazards. Um, I don't know that we have any specific for the harmful algae blooms at this time. Yeah, this is still emerging. I feel like, and you know, we're trying to get our feet under us and understanding what the problems are here. And is it nutrient based? Whatever it is, but we're looking at this. You know, Boysen is the bathtub that collects all of this from everybody, including Du Bois and Lander. So it, all of our water runs and goes to Bois and right? So we're working collectively on this to try to figure this out. And I think more stuff will be coming in the future. I think one of these big things with this Bois and Initiative group is um, they're gonna hire a coordinator that will help with getting stakeholders together and education and trying to help spearhead the direction of where this is gonna go. And I'm probably speaking above my pay grade here. Kathy may know more about this. <laughs> but it's going to be coming um, here in the near future. And we'll, we'll, there'll be somebody hired specifically to address this boys and initiative issue. And with that, we'll probably be more education, stakeholder meetings and information um, and data that we can start to really look at this. Because we just don't know enough yet. We know we have a problem, that's pretty big, but we don't know where it's really coming from and how to get it under control. So <coughs> we're all gonna be working together. And you know, the inputs from Lander, you know, flow downstream and might impact and it's cumulative effect. We don't, you know, we don't know all this stuff yet. So we're all trying to work through that. Um, and Lander, we also have the Healthy Rivers Initiative. We started that up in 2016, and that's a big collaborative um, program. It's not a cost share program, but that's a big community thing that we have with a lot of partners, with a lot of different agencies. And we're actually gonna be doing a river cleanup. There was one done last year, social distance, that a, a local couple put together, which was actually really successful, that they had the city provide trailers, and it was like, you know, during this week, go and collect trash and dump it in the trailer, and the city took care of it. And it worked really well. So. We're hoping to do kind of river cleanups that way, but that's the physical, you know, that's your big stuff. Um, it's not your chemicals and algae. But, uh, but yeah, there's a lot going on. And, and another thing with conservation districts, you know, we're small but mighty, I feel like. We uh, dabble in a lot of different things. But with that, we have a lot of different partnerships and other entities we work with. And so for us, we have people that come in our door and we think we're gonna sign them up for one of our cost share programs and it may turn into an NRCS contract. You know, they get more cost share and it's a better fit for them to go to this program. Or it might be that they go to a Fish and Wildlife Service program. We partner a lot in Lander with uh, Mark Hogan with the US Fish and Wildlife Service and Private Lands uh, program. And so he has money that can help folks too um, with projects. So it, it's, it's a good place to just come and talk to us to see if you've got any resource concerns and issues and you know, we'll see where we can help direct you. But we've got a lot of partners and nexus that can, you know, if we don't fit the bill, somebody else likely will, and we'll know that, so. Yeah. Anything else?
anybody wants to donate millions of dollars to us, that's also greatly appreciated. I know Andy's ready to <coughs> sign over his paycheck, so yeah. his, his ranch. Does anyone have any questions at all? Any concerns? What's the order timeline for your sweeping and freeze this week? Yesterday? No, I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, really, though, it, it's, I think April 12th is our deadline. April I think 16th. So around April, but they're going fast. So for us, it's on our website, um, and it's changing daily. Like Diana is on it because our provider, with COVID restrictions and all this other stuff, you know, supplies aren't what we were hoping they would be. So things are going fast. Um, it's a really good idea if you think you might have an issue on your property, or, you, or not even an issue. You just you want to be thinking about doing some kind of plantings or planting, you know, seeding trees, or if you have you know river property, or if you've got an irrigation ditch, or you've got you know a field you're trying to figure out what to do. It's really good to come in and talk to us, especially, um, you know, winter time is nice, and so we can make this plan and play for some middle heat and hit the ground running when spring hits uh, to get you lined up and stuff. But, but for seedling trees, I'm learning, you know, before they're even available when we could order them, because <laughs> they just go fast, but but they're available right now. So. Yeah. Uh, what types of trees do you have? A whole slew. We go from anything evergreens to deciduous trees to choke cherries to bushes to native there's a lot of um, diversity that's offered. Um, we've even had some, oh, what was it, a Kentucky coffee tree we had a couple years ago. Kind of some anomaly things that we are fast growing. That one too. <laughs> yeah, we had, yeah, there's, there's different, you know, specialty ones, if you will, that we can get here and there. Um, but yeah, there's a huge variety. So basically any, you know, evergreen, deciduous, or shrub, where you, you know, there's a good selection to choose from anyway. And what we do is sell them in uh, bare root bundles of 25 or potted, which is about a gallon pot or so. And so that's what we have available. And, and a good variety, just like kosher. So. And they're, I mean, they're little, they're little, little things. So a lot of them look like sticks, you know, you never know. <laughs> um, but it's good. We get those bare root stocked. And, and we have, we have the gallon pots as well. And then we also have seedlings that come in their little tube. Tube and they're about you know this tall the evergreens are cute little things. Um, when you said when they were excited to say that the river was over you know something that's kind of fast growing and they just sort of saw that not we have the golden willows. Yep, there's the willow the selections willow. you could choose from and, and cottonwoods and things. I mean those are not fast growing, but they're riparian species oriented. And we do um, I don't know if you guys do this, but we have a seedling tree program for schools that we take. We take a fourth graders in in Lander, whatever if you want county school district to one, get a seedling tree from us. Every fourth grader gets a little tree. And, and it varies each year depending on what the, the stock looks like. Sometimes they're evergreen, sometimes they're lilac. Sometimes, you know, it just depends on what we can get in that bundle. But every fourth grader that we go to in, in Lander and um, Fort Washakie and Ethity gets a, a little tree. So um, we offer that program for those kiddos. And actually, it, it helps, the seedling tree program helps us pay for those little trees to do that for those kids. So it's kind of a neat thing. And teach them how to plant a tree and, and care for trees and those kinds of things. And some folks, I, I've only been here five years, but longer than my five years, people have said that they still have their kids' trees when they were in fourth grade, and their kids are, you know, in their own, you know, probably married now. But they're in a pot, you know, they're like an evergreen <laughs> on the back porch, you know, about this tall. So it's kind of funny what, you know, depending on the species that people get that year. So that's what our plan of plants will can help you get started. <laughs> <laughs> Not a tree, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. Is it fair price to those you just mentioned about the seedling tree program? Yes, we, um, and I say yes in the context that we have resources. <laughs> We're like your library, if you will. And then we can get you um, in touch with the um, Department of Ag has specialty crop grants that can help pay for some of these. Uh, Extension had grants at times, I don't know if they do now, programs to do domes, um, geodomes and different kind of hoop houses. Um, NRCF has cost share for hoop houses. Um, so there's a lot of different resources to go. And so I know in Lander anyway, we have an arsenal of here's your plethora of people to go to. We're not the experts, but we know that you have all these options to use and, and can get help with that, either, whether through grants or, or cost share programs or on your own if you just wanted your own plans. And that's one thing, too. We did a, a hoop house tour a couple years ago, maybe three or four years ago in Lander in the fall to see, you know, season extension, how this really works. And that was a big su success. Um, so it's kind of neat to see what others in your community are doing and how they're successful. 
you know, you look, you're better learning from those that have already done this stuff. So um, it's kind of neat that, you know, if we have time and are able, and, and if there's an interest of something from folks, definitely bring it to your conservation district so we can see, because if you have an interest of something like the others do, and we can try to help get a community of information together to do some kind of education thing with it. So, and we like to partner a lot with Extension. They're all right. <laughs> no, Extension has a lot of good programs and resources for that too, so um, there's a lot out there. Any other questions? Concerns? Are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> you can be the first ones to your limited. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard that. Thank you.